My name is Rohit Agarwal. I'm a rheumatologist um, and also associate professor of medicine at University of Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, USA. I'm also the co-director of Myositis Center at UPMC um, and uh, chair of the medical advisory board of the Myositis Association. Dermatomyositis is an autoimmune uh, disease. It's a rare um, heterogeneous autoimmune disease in which um, basically multiple different organs are affected, but most commonly um, is muscle and skin is affected. So the patients get muscle inflammation leading to weakness, um, as well as skin inflammation leading to rash. But it also oftentimes involves multiple other organs, including lung, uh, arthritis, um, a GI, um, Renaud's, uh, and several other clinical features can happen. The biggest unmet need in dermatomyositis is, is there is no FDA or other regulatory agencies approved treatment uh, in dermatomyositis. We treat our patients with dermatomyositis with various different immune suppressive and immunomodulatory agents, and we get many of our patients better. But the problem is there is no proven treatment in this arena, and that's why there is no regulatory approved treatment in this, in this disease state. IV IG or IV immunoglobulin, uh, we've been using it uh, for years um, to treat the patient with dermatomyositis. Um, and uh, it's given in various different doses, but typically we give IV dose once a month. Um, and when we give it once a month, it takes about two to four days to give this infusion. It's an IV infusion. It's a long, it takes a long time. And um, typically we use it as a, a second or third line agent. Um, once we are failing other basic immune suppressive agents. But nowadays, uh, because we are seeing so much of e effectiveness of this drug, we are um, tend to use it first line as well in certain special circumstances, such as if the patient is very severe, then we may use it as a first line treatment or in patients who have difficulty in swallowing. Uh, we could use it in a first line. Uh, otherwise, we use it at first line in patients with pregnancy, malignancy, uh, and patients with high risk of infection. All in these places, it's used as a first line. However, it's still a very good second line and third line agent once the patient is refractory to the basic treatment that we give. The aim of the PRODOM study was um, uh, basically to prove the efficacy safety and tolerability of IVIG in patients with dermatomyositis. Um, the design was essentially a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study. So it had uh, two phases. One was an, a double-blind placebo-controlled phase for 16 v followed by a phase two, which was 24 v but that was an open-label phase in which everybody got IVIG. Um, it was one is to one randomization, which means half got drug and half did not. We enrolled 95 patients and half got drug and half not. And uh, we followed these patients for 16 weeks in a randomized double blind placebo control phase. And the primary endpoint was at uh, 16 weeks, after which everybody uh, entered an open label phase for another 24 weeks uh, with a final study visit at 40 weeks. Um, only patients who didn't enter the open label phase, if you had failed, on IVIG in the first phase, then you were not allowed to continue in the open label phase for ethical and safety reasons. This is the first study uh, that I know, um, the first phase three study that had such a strong positive results. Um, so the drug was highly efficacious, uh, so much so that at 16 week, 80%, about 80% of patients who got drug improved as compared to about 42, 43% patients who were on placebo improved. And that was a minimal improvement, and that was a primary endpoint. But in addition, um, significantly more patients improved, had moderate improvement as compared to uh, patients who got placebo. So about um, 10 to 15 percent patients on placebo improved with moderate improvement, but about 50 to 60 percent patients improved with, uh, with the drug. And in the some major improvement, about 8 percent improved patients had a major improvement with placebo, but 32 percent patients had major improvement with the drug. So uh, no matter how you look at minimal, moderate, or major improvement, the drug was highly efficacious. In terms of safety, there were some uh, issues that are very well known with this IVIG drug. We know that IVIG increases the thromboembolic side effects 
Um, uh, so in this study also, we found that patient had few thromboembolic events such as stroke. Uh, one patient had a stroke, two patients had a PE, which is a pulmonary embolism, and DVT. Um, another patient had a cardiac event. Uh, but, but these are known side effects. And what we found very interesting in the study, that it, initially when we started the study, the rate of infusion was quite high, uh, the rate at which you infuse IVIG. At some point in the study, when we found few events like these, we decreased the rate to much lower rate, like half the rate of infusion. With that, we saw that there was significant decrease in the thromboembolic event. So it appears that thromboembolic events were related to the how fast you give IV infusion. And that makes sense because IVIG is a, is a heavy protein. So if you infuse a lot of IV protein quickly, then that can cause thrombogenesis that can lead to you know, these events. So since we've cut down the rate, we feel very comfortable that this can be safely given. Even without cutting down the rate, the, the frequency of side effects were quite low. Uh, but, um, uh, and these are very well known side effects. I think the, this study is gonna have huge impact on clinical practice. Um, um, although this drug is already being given in patients with dermatomyositis, but I feel sometimes it's given as a third line or as a last resort. And I think it's gonna to move to more like first or second line agent after the study. Um, other thing that is gonna be gonna gain from the study is everybody thought that the drug works, but nobody understood how well it works, how much it works, and there was no really real proof of it working. So this study provides physicians with the really a lot more confidence to give prescribe this drug. Second, we were always not sure about the safety profile. This, this study also provides some parameters of safety profile. For example, um, we should not give this drug on patients who have very high risk of thromboembolic events, you know, would be one takeaway from safety. Um, the other point I think is that's gonna go come from the program study is who is the best patient to respond to IVIG? I think and future results will inform us that uh, because there are some analysis plans that will inform us which are the patients who gain the most uh, well IVIG and who we should not prescribe this drug, perhaps for safety reason, or perhaps those patients may not improve with this drug. So it's gonna really add to the literature and I'm hoping um, that this data of phase three, we get some regulatory approval from EMA or FDA so that these drugs can be, can be given more easily um, to our patients.